Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, I'm Marta. Apologies in advance, I'm sounding a bit foggy. Unfortunately, I still suffer from a cold. It is getting better, but still sounding like my lungs are full of cotton wool. So, we're going to start things off today with some news regarding Micron. So, essentially, they had a grand opening of their Fab 10 expansion in Singapore. So, what this basically means is that they are expecting to start production of 96-layer 3D NAND at the new expansion sometime in the second half of the, of the next calendar year. So, basically in the next four months, to put it in simpler terms. Now, what makes this facility even more interesting is it's not just to, say, add new capacity but it's actually going to house more advanced process equipment necessary to create even more 3D NAND layers. So we're going to be obviously increasing beyond this 96 layer NAND. So obviously Micron are very keen to have their eyes on the future, especially with this particular facility. And to kind of go alongside this, they have also said that they're expanding their R&D operations in Singapore. How much production we actually see from this facility, unsurprisingly, will very much depend on demand, which, you know, should come as a shock to literally no one ever. But it's interesting, 96 layer NAND coming quite soon, actually. And on this particular topic, we actually have some news regarding DRAM prices. So we've been talking an awful lot lately about DRAM prices and how they are pretty much at their lowest that they've ever been, especially after that long period where they were just obscenely expensive. And it seems that price is continuing to fall as we have a report from DRAM Exchange, which basically says that DRAM prices fell nearly 10% in the second quarter of this year, as we see demand just not matching up with the level of supply. Now we did see NAND prices remain flat, however, we are basically just seeing a continued trend in the DRAM area of oversupply problems that has been going on for several quarters. And this actually contributed to a price drop of nearly 30%, and the only exception according to the report from DRAM Exchange was mobile DRAM. And that's because it only suffered a, suffered a decline of 10-20%. to 20%. And server was actually hit the worst with a 35% decline quarter over quarter. And overall, this had a pretty significant impact, as you would expect, on global DRAM revenue, as we saw a decline of 9.1%. And it also hit the big three in this area pretty hard with lower profits for Samsung, SK Hynix, and Micron. Now, unfortunately, it seems, or fortunately for us, unfortunately for the companies, DRAM prices are expected to continue to fall in the third quarter of 2019. Apparently we are just not going to be seeing the supply needed to actually help burn through some of this inventory that's just sitting around in warehouses not doing anything. Unless we see an unexpected spike, at least according to this report, we're going to be seeing that decline go even further. Now, as I said, this is good news for us as consumers. There's not been a better time to buy DRAM memory, but obviously the companies that make this memory aren't best pleased, and the, the DRAM market is definitely feeling the effects. As I said, NAND did do a little better, as DRAM Exchange said that, quote, end demand in smartphone, notebook, PC, and server markets have recovered from the traditional off-season 1Q19. So... We did see some contributing factors to this. We saw a power outage at the production facility excuse me, of Toshiba, which I also discussed. And a few other things basically contributed to help keep NAND prices fairly flat in the second quarter. Apparently, this is only because companies were sitting on so much NAND stockpile. If the Toshiba power outage had happened when there was just a scarcity of NAND due to high demand and not enough supply, for instance, then we would have seen a different story indeed. So... In this particular instance, it did help that they had so much stock lying around, but in literally ever every other segment, DRAM prices are expected to continue to fall. So again, if you've been waiting on the opportunity to purchase yourself some memory, I would get it while the getting is pretty damn good. Moving on, however, to some better news from Samsung. So, as you all probably know, one of the main bugbears of owning a smartphone is battery life. It has gotten better, don't get me wrong, but it's still an issue compared to an older phone. Just for example, as you may or may not know, I recently attended a festival here in the UK, 
and I took an old phone with me just because I didn't really want to take my smartphone to a festival where it's going to get lost, broken, stolen, or maybe even all of the above. In all seriousness, battery life was also a concern, and using this old school phone, even though I was using it pretty heavily over four days, the battery barely went down. That would obviously not really be the case for most smartphones. But it seems Samsung may be on the path to changing that, as they are apparently rumoured to be preparing graphene batteries that can fully charge in under half an hour. And this is according to Evan Bass, or Blast, sorry, not Bass, sorry, apologies, at EV Leaks, who said that the quote unquote suboptimal lithium ion batteries may be surpassed soon by the graphene batteries that Samsung are working on. Apparently, they've been working on this tech for a new year, but it's now plausible and the work is almost complete. And he went on to say, quote, Samsung is hoping to have at least one handset either next year or in 2021, I'm told, which will have feature a graphene battery instead. And these will be capable of a full charge in under half an hour. And on top of this, they're also said to have higher capacity than lithium ion batteries. Now, obviously, this new tech is going to be more expensive and will most likely see, or we will most likely see, should I say, sorry, a increase in smartphone prices thanks to these innovations. But Again, with any new tech, you know, you wait a gen or two and the prices will come down. You can even buy, you know, the last previous gen that has this new battery, but it's not the flagship anymore, so it's cheaper, yada, yada, yada. I mean, I'm pleased to see some movement here because in this particular area, it's kind of remained stagnant. We've seen lots of improvements elsewhere when it comes to mobile devices and like notebooks and laptops and so on. Battery life for those has gotten miles, miles better. Um, but for mobile, yes, it's not as bad as it used to be, but it's kind of just coasted for some time. So pleased to see some movement here from Samsung. But again, this is yet to be confirmed by them, so do take this with a pinch of salt as per normal. So we're going to finish things up with yet more comments from the NVIDIA CEO. And he basically went on to say that, well, apparently in his opinion, buying a non-ray tracing graphics card in 2019 is quote-unquote crazy. And his full quote is, quote, super is off to a super start, and for at this point it's a foregone conclusion that we're going to buy a new graphics card and it's going to last the last two, three, four years. To not have ray tracing is just crazy. Ray tracing content just keeps coming out and between the performance of Super and the fact that it has ray tracing hardware, it's going to be super well positioned for throughout all of next year. So there's a few things that we can take away other than the obvious one from that. Basically, we're going to be seeing these RTX 20 cards be around until at least, well, they're going to be throughout most of 2020. And he's obviously positioning ray tracing is very, very important, but that's not really surprising. You know, they are basically the champions of RTX. You know, ray tracing is kind of their thing this generation. But I don't know if I'd agree that I call it crazy right now. Now, we've seen a lot of comments quite recently that apparently ray tracing is going to become mandatory for certain games um, in the near future, like by 2021, I believe it was. Um, and whether or not that is a bit true, you know, we have to wait and see. But at the moment, at least, I wouldn't agree that it's crazy to not buy a ray tracing card because the amount of games that actually have ray tracing support, I can probably count on one hand. Now, obviously, we're going to get more games, more support come out as the time goes on, as the you know the new tech is improved, and maybe in the next generation we'll see ray tracing be less demanding as developers get used to working with technology and obviously we're going to be see it become a standard with the PS5 and Xbox Scarlet so we might see the performance issues and the availability issues addressed due to the fact that more developers are going to be working with ray tracing just purely just the fact that consoles can now handle it you know obviously they're going to be doing the tech if it's going to be enjoyed by more people so it might be true in the future so if you really want your card to last like five, six years or whatever, yes, it might be crazy. But if we're talking right now, next year or two, probably not. It's probably not going to become mandatory for some time. But let me know your thoughts on his comments, guys. I mean, it's pretty obvious why he's saying them. You don't need me to tell you. But I want to know your opinions. You've heard me talk about it for what feels like a human lifetime at this point. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, the support is highly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.